So as you may have heard, we are coming out with an official RethinkDB Java driver. And uh, that's what I spent the last couple of months running, writing. And so now I'm going to talk about how it works and some of the challenges that you know, came along with writing a driver um, for Java. So uh, what it is, it is an official driver for Java. It's the fourth official driver that we've had. So Jorge mentioned earlier we have Ruby, Python, and JavaScript, and this is now Java and we're going to be supporting and you know, basically doing our, our usual full battery of tests and making sure it's completely compatible. Um, and it's also the first driver in a statically typed language, which is sort of interesting because there, there are some uh, interesting quirks that come along with such a thing uh, based on the fact that Recall was not designed with that in mind. So um, there are already two dr uh, Java drivers, uh, DK Henry and NPIV. DK Henry is the older one, and NPIV wrote one um, that was for Java 8. And um, there's a really good reason for that, uh, which was real, uh, that I'll get to in, in a minute. Um, but both of them were kind of complete, uh, but they were based on the protobuf format. As Jorge mentioned, protobufs are deprecated. And in fact, in 2.2, they're going to be um, pulled out entirely to increase performance. Um, a lot of our stuff is being turned into protobufs and then out of protobufs again, and it's deprecated. So we're just pulling it out, and it's going to be much better. But that leaves the Java, anybody who's using the Java drivers from the community kind of high and dry because they won't work at all now. So that was the main reason why we decided to take on doing the Java driver um, because neither one of them are maintained, so nobody was going to be updating them to work with the JSON protocol. Um, so and, um, so we, when writing it, uh, I based it on NPIV's version, the, the newer one, which was uh, built to take advantage of Java 8's lambdas, which makes Requel extremely nice in uh, in Java. Um, so, okay, so I'll dive into it. This is what this is what it looks like. Uh, so this is the best example I could find of uh, how Java the Java driver compares favorably with the other drivers. So here on the top is the Python driver. Uh, if you're familiar with Python, you know it has notoriously verbose lambda syntax. Um, I'm not being entirely fair here because that's why we added r.row to the Python driver so that you could skip using Lambda. But anyway, it is technically shorter in the Java driver. All right, so here's one. OK, so adding opt-args is a little different. We obviously don't have any keyword arguments in Java. Um, and we could pass in like an object or something, kind of like uh, JavaScript, where you like the last argument is a hash. But Java really, as we'll See, it doesn't have a good hash syntax. So, <laughs> so it's better to just have a method. And so that's how you add an off dog. Um, OK, so here's where it starts getting really hairy. Um, so I don't know if anybody is familiar with the path spec syntax. It's really nice. It looks kind of like um, it's basically a really easy, simple way of filtering down into uh, nested uh, uh, objects in Requel. Um, so that's what's happening here is the we're filtering down the user object. The state object has to be equal to Alaska. And uh, due to Java not having any hash map syntax, that's what it looks like in Java. So um, basically, path specs, you'll probably want to not use them in Java. <laughs> Just you can, do, you can do a normal filter with, like a, with a Lambda function. It'll be a lot nicer. Um, and then, OK, so this is probably the worst part. Uh, Python, Ruby, and JavaScript all have really nice syntax for what we call get field, which pull, you know, basically uh, narrows down the query to a specific field. So you can get down into nested fields really easily. Unfortunately, it's get field in Java, and because uh, you can't overload any operators whatsoever in Java. So that's that's probably the worst one. To be honest, we're thinking about just adding like an alias like .g make it at least shorter because you use get field all the time so um, or bracket as it's sometimes known um, but yeah so that's that's probably the worst of it everything else is is pretty much as you would expect in requel we use camel case instead of underscores but that's you know that's similar to JavaScript driver okay here's a picture of my family that came with keynote um, on our safari last year I actually didn't spend any time with them because I was writing the Java driver <laughs> um, so <laughs> 
Jorge kind of got over, uh, mentioned some of the stuff, which is really nice because I, this is my only thing on what a driver is. Uh, so it, it connects. And so here is probably a good example of like th the best integration we have with your native language. This looks like a native, you know, this is, uh, this is in the Python driver. Um, it looks like you're actually getting a field from a hash map, and it looks like you're actually dividing by two and adding seven. And in reality, that's all being turned into a query and sent to the, to the server and being evaluated on the server. Um, does anybody know what this equation is? No? It's the, uh, it's the equation for <laughs> when you're too, uh, the, the age of the person you can go out with without it being creepy. Um, yeah. <laughs> the minimum age, right, the minimum age. <laughs> the required age, that would be a little, that would be too strong of a statement. Um, okay, so how a driver works. So um, this, is, this is a screenshot from the Python driver. Um, every single, both the Python driver and the JavaScript driver will have something like ast.js or ast.py, a file in there, and every single term in the entire requel language has its own class and has some little special special stuff to, you know, help it be um, serialized and deserialized. So this is from the Python driver, and this is only four, but there are literally hundreds. Um, similarly, on the superclass of all these terms, you have to have methods. This is where the chaining comes from. That everybody's familiar with from Requel, where you have to have methods that will actually create those objects when you pass in arguments. So, you know, this will create a two JSON string term, this will create a match term, et cetera, um, based on the, the arguments that you pass in. And um, the two JSON string term will also have these methods defined on it, and that allows you to continue to chain requel queries together. Um, so it's a lot of boilerplate, uh, inclu you know, even for Python and in JavaScript to have much nicer syntax than, uh, much lighter syntax than Java. Um, it's, it's pretty heavy. Those are big files. And in Java, you have to have one, we have to have one file per class, so it gets really big. Uh, and here's some of the methods. This is how it looks in Java. Um, so we have to do some coercion from the, the object into the, the requel types. And it's a little noisier, but I mean, basically, if you're familiar with it, you can kind of see the similarity at rough level. Um, so again, you know, so this is how it happens. Uh, I won't get into the serialization because uh, Jorge mentioned that, but the, um, you take the expressions that are just math and then you can, um, you build this little tree structure out of it and you can probably see here, this is starting to look more like the nested array syntax that Jorge was talking about. Um, and it pretty much gets serialized directly like that from those classes. So we build up this tree structure, abstract syntax tree, and turn it into JSON, and then everything that beyond that is too level lo lo low level for this talk. Um, so as I mentioned, Requel was not really designed with statically typed languages in mind. Some of the drivers, like the Haskell driver, and I think somebody wrote a, a driver and even like a dependently typed language that do some really tricky stuff to try to, you know, catch all possible requel errors before it's ever sent to the server. But in general, what the drivers do is they take whatever kind of crazy query you want to do, send it to the server, and if the server rejects it, they throw an exception. Um, they don't do a lot, like basically checking, you know, number of arguments to the term is correct. That's about the most, most of the drivers do. And um, so they're not really designed with, you know, a static language kind of getting in there and putting a bunch of restrictions on what kind of terms you can create. Um, Again, Requel uses lambdas and anonymous functions all over the place, so if your language doesn't have those, it's going to be really bad, and I'll show you what it looks like in Java 7 so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, and so, and of course, adding a new driver, official driver, increases the maintenance. Um, we have to make sure that they're, uh, you know, so c community drivers, they test themselves as much as they, you know, have time for, and we really appreciate it and stuff, but like, if, it, if it's our official driver, we have to make sure it's, you know, rock solid for production because we're putting our name behind it. So, um, so yeah, so the maintenance, co the maintenance of adding an extra driver is, you know, something to consider. And, uh, yeah, and then some Java cosmetic stuff. Um, so as I mentioned before, it's a lot of boilerplate in Java. Uh, and just uh, the drivers in general just have a lot of boilerplate in them. So what we did is, 
I wrote a bunch of Python, and it generates a ton of Java files automatically. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's how I got around that problem. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say there's more Python code than Java code in the Java driver, but it's probably pretty close. Uh, <laughs> so like code generation is not a new thing in Java. People do it all the time. They have a ton of tools. Um, at RethinkDB, everybody pretty much knows Python, but nobody really, like, you know, people kind of passingly know Java, but it's, you know, it's not something that's going to be easy for anybody who wants to make a quick fix in all the drivers to come and pick up. So, um, so writing in Python kind of made sense for us. Um, and yeah, actually, we just use like uh, Mako, which is like an HTML template generator, and then it just you know has like a template Python or a Java file with all the imports and stuff, and it inserts the methods in a little loop, just like you do for a web page. Um, but one one piece that I had to create for this in order for this to work is a huge JSON file with a specification for all the requal terms in a little bit more detail than we currently have. So I have basically where it's going to be, uh, the signatures the term's going to have, and then the ID, which we already have. In the, um, so that's the little number that gets serialized that Jorge was talking about. Um, so this is the count um, term. So you don't have like r.count. That's not legal. Uh, so it's not allowed at the top level. So we only include it in um, expressions, that kind of thing. And then it has three different possible signatures that you can use. Um, the first one is just count whatever the heck is coming before this. So if you just do r.table.count, you just how many documents are in this table. Uh, count foo would be how many documents, how many things in this stream are equal to foo. And then count with that lambda would be you can just do some arbitrary check on how many of them in this stream match that. So that's what the three signatures are. Um, and so I had to do this for every single, you know, term. I kind of, you know, got a lot of this from the existing drivers, but that was a lot of work. Um, so yeah, so G lambdas. This is why we can now really kind of build a Java driver that was not really feasible before, because um, they added anonymous functions in uh, Java 8. And uh, so this is what it would have looked like in Java 7. It would have created an inst, because uh, you can't just create a function as an object by itself in Java 7 or before. So you create an anonymous inner class, which just subclasses this. Then you override the apply function, and then you actually do your math that you want to do in there. Um, and you have to pull it, provide the full signature and all the types for everything. Um, and then in Java 8, this is what it looks like. It's much nicer. <laughs> so, um, and they're literally like that. It's not quite the same bytecode, but it's like semantically the same meaning in Java 8. Um, so yeah, the, the idea is the Lambda basically takes an interface that has one method, and it implements that one method and creates an instance of that interface. So it was really great for Java because that's backwards compatible, but um, they have some big issues. One of them is that you can't just apply things. Uh, like it's not a real function. It's not a real method. It can't just, you can't just call it. You have to do dot apply. It's an object that has an apply method on it. Um, that doesn't really bother us for for requal because you can, uh, the driver applies all the methods for you, so it, you don't really get exposed to that. But for the other big issue that we had is um, Java needs to know what kind of interface you're implementing. You can't just throw, like in Python, if you do a lambda, it's just a function object. It doesn't care what it is. But in um, in Java, you kind of need it needs to know what interface it's going to be implementing. Um, so the way this kind of shakes out is if we have, uh, okay, so here like this, um, this method with map object dot dot dot, that's, the, that's like the splat syntax basically. It's like, okay, any number of objects you can pass to the map method. Um, an object is the top, you know, top class, everything inherits from it. Um, if, we, if we pass it a lambda, it doesn't have any idea which interface we want the lambda to be implementing. So um, you have to be able, you have to like know ahead of time which arguments in the term will be functions, so that we can tell Java which interface to implement. Um, so okay, so like count that we were talking about earlier. Here's here would be like the full signatures that you would have to provide for count in order to, for that to work and. 
So if you pass a lambda, it knows it's going to be implementing the requal function one interface, which is just an interface with a uh, method of one argument. Um, yeah, so we also, with like requal again, not being designed for a statically typed language, like doesn't know, it, it does some stuff that's like really tricky to fit into Java's type system. So one of the things is like map can take extra arguments and then it will pass those extra arguments, it'll iterate all over all of your sequences together and it'll pass the extra arguments to your, your lambda function. So your lambda function has to get more and more arguments as it goes along. And uh, Java doesn't let you have like the dot 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 syntax in your lambda. You have to have a fixed number of arguments. So we have to know like, okay, if it's, it's one argument, you know, it's gonna be a one argument lambda. If it's two arguments, it's gonna be two argument lambda. Um, and Requal will let you do infinite number, you know, you can do a 27 argument lambda if you want to. Um, but we basically just had to like generate a finite number of them and that's that. So, uh, so that's one limitation. Although if you're, to be honest, I feel like if you're using four or five l arguments in your lambda in your map, then you should have your head checked maybe. But, um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, and then just some last little bits, like Java does, as I mentioned before, doesn't have any map or list literals, so stuff like path specs really don't make much sense in the Java driver. It's easier to just explicitly write out the query. Um, yeah, so this is, the this is the path spec, in case you're not familiar with that term, um, that just is supposed to be a really convenient syntax, and it really is in Java, Ruby, and Python, but or JavaScript, Ruby, and Python, but in Java, it's not convenient at all. <laughs> um, and then we don't have any operator overloading. That's similar to JavaScript, but uh, so in JavaScript you can actually use the, we, we did some magic with the constructor to allow you to do get field with just parentheses. Um, and we can't even do that in Java. Um, there's no mucking around with the superclass or anything. So that's what it looks like. It's got it's a little verbose, but you know, it's probably better than most Java. Um, so right now I'm working on converting all the rest of the, our huge battery of tests to test the heck out of the Java driver so we can release it in beta and actually let people use it. Right now you can go check out the branch if you want to and build it yourself if you're feeling adventurous. It's sort of an unofficial alpha stage right now. Um, and yeah, so we should, be have, we should have a packaged beta version soon enough. Uh, this is just the stuff that's missing. We don't have backtraces or profiles or pretty printing. Um, and then there's some other stuff that like people who are using Java frameworks would really like to have, like swapping out the JSON parser and, and being able to use async IO and stuff like that. But that's, that is for the future. So, any questions?